Today, we're going to experience vintage made new again with this woman's peaked hat coming up I think next. I'm gonna be okay. I think I'm gonna be amazed in this beautiful day. Pretty smile. I think I'm Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host, Mikey. Today we're going to experience the women's peaked hat and this is a great vintage pattern that has been revived and it looks absolutely amazing and it's a lot more easier to crochet than it looks like. So what we're going to be doing today is I'm going to be showing you pattern tips in order for you to make this successfully and to make it much faster when you know the key elements. First of all, we're going to review the back of the hat and you will notice from the side profile that the back of the hat is more of a flat shape just like so and I'm going to show you some key components because when it comes to all these spokes here in the back, you're going to notice that there is a pattern even if you don't see it within the instructions. Within today's pattern, you're going to be noticing a set of written instructions and you can follow those very easily but I really like the crocheted diagram that is being shown on the second page of the instructions. This is what I refer to when I'm reading my instructions and what I really want to point out to you is that I want to show you the correlation of the spokes versus the pattern here and that I was really confused on rounds number five and six as well as seven and eight because I wasn't understanding that there's a correlation to how this hat is growing. Because there are 16 spokes that go around this, growing this hat actually is a little more harder when you're actually going to read the instructions because you're thinking that the diagram is wrong and you're thinking that the designer is wrong. What's happening here is that in a normal hat you would have normally run uh, 12 of these spokes and usually it's a flat hat so it's not as obvious as, as it is today. And what you usually have is that you have four single crochet and then two into the next, four single crochet, two into the next. But because there are 16 here, these do not grow equally. So in round number five and six and seven and eight you're going to notice that there's a differential in the instructions because it has to grow naturally without getting too big. If it gets big too fast then what happens is that the hat loses the formation and doesn't appear to be flat at the back. So I'm going to just show you another tip right now. So let's review the diagram a little more carefully and you can read this in the instructions as well but the diagram is a lot easier to tell. So what's going to happen in rows number five and six, so right here and here and seven and eight is a differential of stitches in between the spokes. So let's review number five first. So five will come around and then you will have one double crochet sitting by itself and then you're going to have the actual spoke. Okay, so these are the spokes. I've done them in green and pink and if you follow it around the next one will have two double crochets into the same one underneath and then a spoke and then there's one by itself and then a spoke. So you can see here that up until rounds number four we have been growing equally but in five what happens is that there's going to be one uh, double crochet by itself and on the other side of the spoke it'll be two and then there'll be one and two. So how it works out is that number six then is that this one that's sitting by itself will then end up being two. There will be two put into there and then these two that were put into five into row number five is that one double crochet will be in each. So really five basically is the start of the growing but it's not growing in between each spoke. It's only growing in every other one and then six it's growing again but it's growing into the one that wasn't growing in number five. Hopefully that makes any sense. Same thing is happening with seven. So seven we have two double crochets sitting by themselves. The next one we're going to have two into the same and then a third one or a third one over here. So basically you have two double crochets here. This one there's going to be three, two and three. So then we come around to number eight. Then these two end up becoming three. This is three. 3, 3. So you can kind of see that within 5 all the way to 8 is that it's growing slowly but it's not growing equally so that there's not the same growth in between all of the spokes and hopefully that makes a lot of sense to you. Just for fun today I'm going to be using Peyton's Canadiana and this is an acrylic yarn. You can see on the instructions that it's a five millimeter crochet hook today which we're going to be using off camera as well as it's really great. You only need actually one ball for one of these so if you're substituting your yarn just make sure it matches this information and of course in the more information of this video I will provide a link for the pattern as well as details in regards to the yarn. So as per the diagram and probably what you already know, we're going to be starting at the top of the hat and so let's create a slip knot to begin and like so. 
and there remember there's other slower tutorials if you're just learning how to crochet we do have other tutorials on doing things like that a lot more slower within our channel. We're going to begin and we're going to do a chaining of three. So one, two, three and let's form the center ring of the hat. So we're just gonna come into the very center like so or sorry the very starting chain just like so. Pull through the yarn like this and basically you have a ring. It's kinda hard to tell it's a little tight but if you have it too big then you're gonna have a hole right in the top of your hat and we don't want that. So let's start our first round. Very simple we're just going to start and begin with a chain three. So one, two and three and we're gonna do seven double crochets into the center. Seven is kind of a weird number, right? But remember in the rules of crochet that this chaining of three counts as one of the double crochets therefore it's actually eight. So we're going to put in seven double crochets right into the center. So just pull it open. Look for the center of that ring. Okay and we're going to put in seven double crochets. So that was one and two. We have three, four, and five, six, and seven. So you're going to notice right away it's like whoa that did not go all the way around. You have to trust in the pattern. So if you're counting at this point remember that the chain three counts as a double crochet. So you can actually count that out. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So basically the chain three plus seven double crochets equals eight. So let's uh, begin. We're going to then slip stitch to the top of the chain three that we started with and that's gonna pull it into a final circle. So just pull through and through. Never go into the gap just like I'm showing there. Always go into a chain space or chain area of that and then that will pull it nice and close and so you don't end up ha having any gaudy uh, gaps within your work. Let's move on to round number two. Let's begin round number two but there's some special instructions that we need to pay attention to. It says chain two. Now if you look at the special instructions above it says chain two at the beginning of the round does not count as a stitch. That's important because you don't wanna miscount any of your stuff that's going all the way around. What we're going to be doing is we're going to chain two one and two and we're going to do a DC FP into each uh, one of these. So what is exactly that? That's a double crochet front post and we need to do two of them around each one of the eight. Okay so that chain three inc is included in that. So we're just gonna start off with the very first one. It's kind of hard to see but you can actually once you get the first one it's easy. So how you do a front post and double crochet is basically wrap the hook coming in to the side of the post and back out the other side. Like so and we're coming from the front and we're going to double crochet as normal. And we wanna do two into each one of these. So this is gonna grow the hat by doubling the rotation going all the way around. Once you get the first one we're going to do two into the next. So just coming into the side, pop it out the other side and put in two double crochets there. So that's a front post double crochet. We come into the next and you keep doing that all the way around. So there should be a total of eight sections where there's two stitches coming out of if you've got it counted properly. So continue to do that. I'll meet you back up in just a second. We'll finish off this round together. So just come up all the way around. I know that I'm done because I can see that I have eight sections of two front post double crochets going around. If you can't see it just pull it apart and you will see it. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Now here's the funny thing about this pattern. If you join it to the chain two that you started with you're gonna have a really bad seam. So with this pattern the chain two just gets you to the height that you need but you don't use it for anything else. You just simply when you go to slip stitch you're gonna go to the top of the first front post double crochet to join it. Okay so you just pull through and through and then that keeps that seam line in control. So what I'm going to do is that I've just joined it but what happens if I want to join on more yarn? If I wanna change color? I'm gonna cover that next so I'm just gonna fasten this off. You can change color as often as you wish. It's actually kind of fun. I have a really outlandish colorful hat within this pattern and it looks amazing. So I'm just going to fasten this off just weaving a few ends here and I'm going to join on a second color and I'm basically just gonna change color at random throughout this hat so that my hat doesn't, it looks more artistic than it looks planned and that's just something that I prefer within myself. So I'm going to be right back and I'll get you some more yarn and I'll show you how to do more. 
For round number three I'm going to add another color and I'm just gonna get my blue up and I'm just gonna create a slip knot. And this is how I join my yarn. It's just a preference for me. If you wanna join it any way else you can be welcome to do so. So I can clearly see that this is my chain two in behind here and I can see that all of the the sections are there. When I go to join on the new yarn I wanna join it to the very top of the first uh, front post double crochet. The reason for it is that's where we're gonna start it because that's where we joined the other round. So let's just join that on. Just pull it through. Okay, leave that straggler underneath and we want to chain two, one and two. And now we're ready to move on to round number three. Let's begin round number three. Round number three does not grow up equally so it's not the same amount of stitches in between all of these spokes. So the spokes are gonna do a division off. So let's set begin and we're going to do front post double crochet around the first front post double crochet. Just like so. Okay and then what we're going to do is that we're gonna put another front post double crochet around the next one. So here's where the fun begins. So we need to put in a double crochet but the double crochet cannot go in anywhere because we have the front post double crochets here. So what we have to do is just pull these apart and we're gonna double crochet right in between the gapping space. That's right. So we're adding in our stitch there. So now we're gonna continue. So these next two front post double crochet are gonna get one each. So a front post double crochet around that one and a front post double crochet around that one. And now it's time to do our secondary which is making it a little bit bigger. So we're now gonna come into the next gapping spaces. Okay, so and we're just gonna put in one double crochet. Do you see that? So basically the two are working together and then we're just putting in a double crochet in between. So these two front post double crochet are gonna get one each front post double crochet and then we just double crochet in between. So we pull it apart and just go in between the two sections and double crochet. Continue to do that all the way around for round number three. So I'm coming up all the way around I have my two front posts double crochet in and I screwed up in the very first time I ever did this hat and what I didn't do is that I didn't put a double crochet in between here. So here's the front post double crochets here. Here's the front on this side. I need to put one in this gap before we continue. And then basically I have to fast, I have to then slip stitch to the top of the beginning front post double crochet. So this chaining of two I just completely ignore it and just come into the top just like this. And what I'm gonna do when I come back I'm gonna switch off these colors and start on new again and basically it's working out pretty good and you just gotta make sure you're being consistent when growing this hat. Let's begin round number four and this is where I've started and stopped because this is my chain uh, two that we had and I want to start off with some new yarn and I'm gonna start it at the top of the front post double crochet in the first one. So in this round here basically we need to start separating out the two that are together, front post double crochets that are together. So right now is that in the last round we separated that these two now have a double crochet in between and so this is our goal for this one is that we're, when we do this one we're going to do a double crochet in between where they're together to split them off. So let's uh, begin. I'm going to just fasten on and I'm going to chain two. Just like so. And so what I want to do then at this point is the very first one. This is round number four is that we're going to start off and do a front post double crochet around the first one. Very easy peasy right? So then the next one is that we're gonna put a double crochet in between the two front post double crochets to split them. So we're just gonna split them off. Okay and then the next one is our front post double crochet and we're gonna maintain that. Whenever there's a front post double crochet in this pattern up until we get to round number nine is that we're maintaining the front post double crochet always. So you can see that the next one is in between where we split it off. So that's just gonna be a double crochet to match what is already there. Okay so let's begin. The next one you can see four or two double crochets together. They're the front post. We're gonna honor the first one. So front post double crochet for the first one. We need to split these off. So we're just going to put in a double crochet into the gapping space in between and then we're going to front post double crochet the second one. So again the next one there's a, a double crochet there. It's not a front post double crochet. We just wanna honor it. So we're gonna put a double crochet. The next one is a front post double crochet. We're gonna maintain that one. And see the next front post double crochet it's right beside it but we wanna split them off so there will be a double crochet in between. 
and then put this one to be front post double crochet. Maintain that all the way around. When we come back I'll fasten off again when we get on with the new color with round number five. So I'm finishing up round number four here and basically we wanna honor these front post double crochets that exist and now we just wanna make sure we get into this very last one here. Don't forget that one uh, in order to maintain this pattern because you see you have front post double crochet, you have front post double crochet on this side. We need to ensure that we put in a double crochet here into the final one. Make sure we only grab those fibers and then we're just going to join it with the top at the beginning front post double crochet just like we started and that completes off this round. So you can clearly see at this round now all the 16 spokes are equally separated by one double crochet in between each but when we come up to the next few rows we're going to be growing incrementally and this is gonna change in between each one of these spokes that we have coming up and we'll do that right next but I wanna change my yarn once again. Let's begin round number five and number five is when it starts getting complicated and we'll take our time for this because five, six, seven, and eight is when it does get kinda confusing. Here's what the back looks like just so that you're interested because we are doing the back post or front post uh, double crochet. It looks really kinda even on the first side and the other side it looks pretty um, really rumply just like so. So let's uh, begin. I'm going to fasten on my new color and I wanna just maintain where I am here. And so I can see that this is my chain two that I started with so I wanna join my new yarn onto the beginning front post double crochet. And let's begin round number five together. To begin number five this is the repeat pattern and I'll show you. So we're gonna chain two. Remember that doesn't count as anything. It's just a placeholder and so we're going to honor the very first front post double crochet with another front post double crochet just like so. And so the next one is a double crochet and you can see it's in the in between the spokes. Okay so then we're just gonna honor that with the double crochet. So we're now in a front post double crochet situation for the next one. So we're gonna honor that one and here's where it gets fun. So the next one here you have a front post double crochet here, you have a front post double crochet here, you have one double crochet that is in between. This time we're going to put in two double crochets into this one. Okay so this is where it's gonna grow. So every other in between the spokes you're gonna have one by itself and the other one is going to have two. So let's honor the next front post double crochet. So here's the repeat pattern. The next one is a double crochet. Just honor that one. And then the next one is a front post double crochet. You wanna honor that one. So the next one is going to be two. So you see that? So we started off with one here. We now have two sitting here. There's gonna be one and now this one here there's going to be two double crochets. And we just wanna keep repeating that all the way around on this particular round. So let me repeat that one more time. So we're gonna honor the first one with the front post double crochet. The next one is going to be by itself as double crochet because we have the two on this side. The next one is a front post double crochet and this is where we expand it. So there will be two into this one here. Continue to do that all the way around for this round just like so. So we're coming up all the way back around. If you've done your math right there will be two double crochets into the last one and then we're just going to join it with the top of the beginning or the beginning front post double crochet and I'm going to fasten off at this point and I'm gonna be right back and I'll just join on another yarn and then show you how to do round number six. Let's begin round number six and I'm just gonna start another color so it'll be the joining to the top of the first front post double crochet from the round below like so. So now round number six is interesting because what we have to do is that you can clearly see we have one double crochet by itself and then we, the, we have the front post. Okay so I'm gonna call these the spokes and then you have two double crochets here and then you have a spoke one spoke two. So now what we need to do for this round is that every one that is sitting by itself okay is going to double itself. So let's begin to do the first one. So we're gonna chain two, one and two and what we need to do is that we need to honor the first spoke so it's front post double crochet and the next one is sitting by itself. So this time when it's sitting by itself I want you to put in two double crochets like so. So here's another spoke coming up so that's gonna be honored with the front post double crochet just like so and now this one has two double crochets in it uh, in between the two spokes so we're just gonna give it one double crochet into each. 
So on this round what's happening is that we're becoming back in balance so that we're gonna end up with two double crochets that separate each one of the spokes. Let's review that one more time. We have two spokes here with one in the middle. Therefore this one should have two put into this one. Two double crochets into the same stitch and then we honor the front post double crochet like so. The next one has already two so we're just gonna put into one into each and continue to repeat that same pattern going all the way around. When you get all the way back around you should end up with two that are sitting by themselves here just like you had. So you had them together and this one they're two by themselves and we just join it with the top of the beginning front post and double crochet. So let's uh, begin. We're going to work on the next one round number seven and I'm gonna change my yarn once again. Let's begin round number seven together and I'm just going to join on a new color and I'm just going to join it to the top of the front post double crochet that we started with just like so. So let's uh, begin and this time we're going to do another expansion but this time we cannot grow it equally again so you can see everything is back in balance. We have twos in between each one of the spokes. This time we're gonna send it off balance once again and then be back in balance for round number eight. To begin we're going to start off and we're going to chain off two just like so and we're going to honor the first two double crochets that sit by themselves. Sorry, let's get that front post double crochet first. So we're gonna just honor the front post double crochet and you have two double crochets that are sitting by themselves. We just wanna put one into each. So we're not gonna expand in between this particular spoke to the next spoke. So here's the next front post double crochet. We're gonna give another front post double crochet and now here's where we're going to do the expansion. So on this one here when you have two by themselves you're going to put in two double crochets in the first one, one and two and followed by the next one will be by itself. So a double crochet by itself and then we're gonna do another spoke. So the repeat pattern on this one here is that the first set of spokes there's gonna be two double crochets by themselves. The next one there will be three. So let's uh, repeat this pattern once again. So these two that are coming up are going to get one double crochet into each and then we make the next spoke. So it's front post double crochet around the other one and now it's this one that we're going to do the expansion. So the first one is gonna get two double crochets and then the next one is by itself a double crochet and then the next spoke. So if you can uh, if you can really see that on this particular round then we're growing it but it's not growing equally because in round number eight what we're going to do is put in three into this one and we're going to leave these be three into this one and then it'll be back in balance once again. Please do that same pattern going all the way around. Just finishing up round number seven and we're just going to join it to the top of the beginning front post double crochet. I'm going to fasten off at this point and you can clearly see everything starting to come together. It's really still quite flat and it's great and we're going to work on round number eight. Round number eight is the final growing revolution in order to make all of these spikes work out really well. So let's uh, fasten off this yarn. I'll be right back and have some new yarn and we'll get started. Let's begin round number eight and I'm just joining on my new yarn. I wanna join it to the top of the beginning front post double crochet like so. So this round is about making balance happen. So the first one we have two single or double crochets by themselves. The next one we have three. So this time around we want to put in so that it's growing in the ones that only have two. So if you remember that it just makes it a lot easier. So we're going to start off we're going to chain two and we're going to honor the first front post double crochet just like so. And so this time around what we want to do with the very first one here we want to turn it into two. So we're just gonna put in two double crochets into that same stitch and then the next one is a double crochet by itself and then the next spoke is happening. So front post double crochet. So we put in two there, there's one in there. So this time this one has three so we just wanna maintain it. So we're just gonna put in one double crochet into each one of the three to bring balance in between each one of the spokes as you go all the way around. So we have a spoke next. So here's the repeat pattern and again this one only has two so we're gonna make that first one turn into two by itself okay into the same stitch and then one into the next. And so therefore you just now have three like you do in the other ones and 
then the next ones there's already three in there. So we're just gonna honor it with one double crochet into each. Continue that same pattern going all the way around. This is the final time that we're growing this one. It's gonna take a few more revolutions for it to stop growing and uh, this is the hard part I think of this entire piece just like so. When you get all the way back around we're just going to join it to the top of the beginning front post double crochet just like so and we have now just completed that and now we're ready to move up to round number nine. Nine and ten are the repeat pattern for the remainder of it until we get to the visor and it's actually really really easy and a lot of fun I have to say. When I come back I'm gonna change color once again and I'm gonna show you how to do rounds number nine and ten. So I just joined on a new color. I'm ready for round number nine. Nine is just single crochet all the way around. If joining the yarn you will be starting at the top of the beginning front post double crochet. So even if you are not joining new yarn that's exactly where you would be anyway. So let's say begin we're going to chain one and then just single crochet into each one of the stitches going all the way around. We're no longer growing this out. I've decided that I'm gonna make the remaining of my color the same with this beautiful bright uh, fuchsia color and I'm basically just honoring exactly what is there. So there's gonna be a single crochet into each one of these going all the way around and when we come back I'll be at the end of this round and I'll show you how to do rounds number 10 and 10 is really simple as well. So let's continue to, to do that in just a moment. When you finish round number nine you're just going to simply just join it to the beginning just like so. So let's uh, begin. Round number 10 is actually really really simple. It's just got a matter of watching for where the spokes are. So we're now ready to begin round number 10 and round number 10 is really easy and it's just a matter of maintaining the pattern. You're going to see these spokes are really gonna start popping out. To begin we're going to chain two. Remember that doesn't count it as anything in this. So we're going to look for the first uh, front post double crochet which is the very next one here and we wanna go into that one. So it's not the row below, it's the second one. Okay and we're just gonna maintain that and we're gonna put in three front post double crochet into that one. So it's a like spoke, right? So we're making that spoke really pop out at this time. And now in between what we have to do is that you see that there's three double crochets by themselves. We want only the middle one and we're going to double crochet into that spot. So let's begin to do the repeat pattern. We immediately look for the next spoke which is right here. We're going to front post double crochet. So it's not into that single crochet line that we just did. We wanna put in three in there. And then once you have that done you see the next three here you're just gonna double crochet into the middle one of the three and please repeat that same pattern going all the way around. Once you come all the way back around you're going to have your double crochet in between and you're, you're just going to join it to the top of the beginning front post double crochet. So that chaining two we don't even worry about it at this time. So let's uh, begin. We're going to start off with the next round and round number uh, 11 is really simple. We're just gonna chain up one and we're just going to single crochet into that first stitch and then to every stitch going all the way around. So this is a very simple round and it makes it really easy to follow this pattern because we're just gonna either do front post double crochets like we just did all the way around or we're gonna do single crochets until we get to our visor. So please single crochet all the way around. When you get all the way back around we're just going to join it to the top of the beginning single crochet that we started off with just like so. So now we're going to start off with the next round in round number 12. Now round number 12 we're going to be doing these spiky things just like so the front post double crochet but we're not gonna do it on top of each other. We're going to do it in between. Do you remember that double crochet that we did in between each one of those? Those are where we're going to be playing for this particular round. But right now we're in the wrong section of this particular pattern. We need to move over to the middle one of the three. We're on the first one. We just need to slip stitch over to the first one to get started. To get started for then then at this point is that we're just going to um, just double or sorry chain three. So one, two, and three just to get started just like so and what we're going to do at this point then is that we're going to double crochet three times into this front post that's two rows down just like so. So one, two, and three. And now this time we're going to then put in one double crochet into the middle one of the three that exists right here. Just like there. Okay so let's repeat this again. So we're just gonna 
just separate them. You can see the double crochet is down two rows below and you're gonna put in three double crochet around that. That's front post double crochet and then we just need to put in one double crochet into the middle one of the three from the last row that you see there. Okay, so continue to do that all the way around and when we come back I will show you some more tips on to being able to get start or continue this pattern. So this is a really easy one to follow along. When you get all the way back around on this round remember that you've already started with your chain three and so you just wanna begin to slip stitch to the top of the beginning chain three to bring that round into conclusion. To start off the next round so you know how to do this pattern now it's just a repeat of doing these uh, several rounds from 10 all the way to 14. So we're just going to start again and we're going to just chain one single crochet into each one of the stitches going all the way around and then just basically just continue to start up exactly where you should go. So this time when we come back all the way around we're gonna be doing exactly what you did here. So you'd be back here for round number 10 and just keep repeating the pattern going all the way around. When we come back I'm going to have the remaining of this hat completed and then we are going to start off with doing the visor. The visor is really simple. It's just a matter of actually doing it and making it really look great at that point. So I'll leave this to you. Uh, you're also looking for dimensions of eight inches. So when you go to fold this hat down that you're looking for an eight inch thing you can try on this hat as well to make sure that it's gonna fit you uh, for the right height that you have. And then basically when we go to look at the actual finished model just like so. You can clearly see that the visor comes down a little bit low like this to keep that sunshine off your eyes and to make it really cool and you can clearly see it just looks like that at this point. So it gives you a really indication what you're looking for. So off camera I've been working on another version and you can see my color changes. So you'll see that there's kind of uh, interesting colors here. You got like a maroon here in between. All I did for that is instead of making a solid single crochet and then one of these uh, front post double crochets what I did is I changed the color every round to make these colors look like they're just imme immediately just popping out of just little areas. It makes it for a little bit of an interesting effect. So once you get to the height that you need it's about eight inches that they're recommending. You can try it on your head if you're making it for yourself as well. You're going to finish off then and you're going to make two solid rounds of just single crochet going all the way around. But do not fasten off unless you intend to change color. For me of course I'm gonna change my color again so that my visor is going to be a different color than the main colors just like you see here. So I decided to do like a solid gray here just for a visual effect and then I just need to finish off two rounds of doing single crochet all the way around and then what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna join you back here and we're going to begin to do the visor which is really quite simple. It's actually just single crochet back and forth. So do two rounds of single crochet and I'll meet you and we'll get started on the on the visor and you're almost done at this point. To begin I'm just going to fasten on where I just went around and technically if you're not changing color you'll be at the spot anyway. So I'm just changing my color just to make my visor a little more interesting. So when I fold it up it's folding up over the gray and it looks a lot more visually interesting. So what we're going to do is that to, to start off with we're going to chain one and one single crochet into the starting and what we have to do at this point is that we're going to do one single crochet into 46 stitches. Now you can watch me do it or you can just do it on your own. So that we have one in there so far, two and then three. So this is what you already know, four and five and go all the way to 46 and we'll meet back up in just a moment. So you're going to get to 46 and you can kind of see what's happening here. It doesn't go all the way around just a partial. Once you get to the end we are just going to turn our work, chain one and then begin again. So we're just gonna single crochet. So you need to do a total of 10 of these rows going back and forth continuing to go on. It is a sharp edge just like you see. So when you see it folded up on the hat you can see it's a nice straight line and all it is it's 10 rows of just doing single crochet. So please do that and when we come back I'll just give you an overview for the button and then this is called quits for today. So here's what the hat looks like now. I have my 10 rows for the brim and this does not look like our hat yet but it's very very close. All we just have to do is just fold up the brim on the one side for now and we just have it on a slight angle like so and just using a button we just want to sew right through this 
flap here as well as going right through to the hat underneath and all we just have to do is do the same thing on both sides and then this is permanently up. Now here's a tip for you. I noticed that in my hat one of the sides when I go to fold it up, maybe it's this side, one of the sides it just happens to even if you pin it it falls down like I just kind of see how this kind of just comes down down like this. All I just did is that I took the same color yarn and I just tacked it so I came up with my darning needle just really tack this down as well as putting into the button like so and therefore you end up with the perfect um, piece that looks like it's all part of the hat as well. So it's a little tip just in case. When I come back I'll have this hat completely done. We're just gonna use a uh, sewing uh, needle in order to come in and this is really quite easy and fun. Here's a little useless tip for you but actually it might work out pretty good. So what I like to do is that I like to have my yarn as actually the focal point on top of a button but how do I get yarn through a needle that's gonna be able to fit through this? See these kind of needles here? They're really interesting. So they have a big huge gap space right in the middle. I don't wanna pull it apart too far but what I can do is that I can get my yarn into this gapping space and it kind of just closes onto itself. So it's better than a darning needle and all I just need to do is that when I go to fix up like so is that this here will actually fit through the eye, the needle like so. So that's a great little tip in order for you to get your needles through uh, your particular uh, buttons and these are really kind of cool and fabulous. To affix the button all I'm just gonna do is just fold up the one side like so and it's up on a slight angle like this and what I need to do is that I've created a slip knot on the other side of the string and I'm just gonna poke it through just to a rough area to where I want the button and just pushing it through and then I'm going to insert my button on there like so. So I just wanna kinda rotate it so it's not too close to the edge and so I can come up one side like so and I don't wanna pull it all the way through. I wanna leave that loop coming through the bottom and go down through across to the other side. See how effective these tools work? Like so. And I wanna go through that loop. Notice I'm not really using this tool to really apply pressure to it. I'm using the string itself. This is a really thin and it will break very easily and so I don't wanna <laughs> ruin my chances for ruining a tool. And so essentially once I have that in I wanna come back the other side. Just kinda poking it through. It's a matter of trying to find the hole. There we go, got it. Just like so. And so now I have the beautiful yarn that's in there, has it around the button. It looks a lot more kind of homemade but in a way that looks really kind of cool and all I'm just gonna do is then just go through a few of the fibers here in the back and just make sure that it catches and then ties everything shut and then I'm gonna trim my ends really short and I'm gonna do the same for both sides. It just makes it really a lot easier with this little tool. I've seen them on the shelves I just didn't know exactly how to use them up until this point. So that's it and so you can see now that the yarn is through. So this here all I'm just gonna do see how it's kind of folding down. So I'm gonna use the same string might as well right it's already there and I'm just gonna come up through another section closer to the top of the of to where this is folding in. I'm just gonna go through there. Right up top and then back down and you'll never see it. And then that'll be permanently affixed to the top of the hat and won't be worrying about falling down. I found one of the sides likes to do that and then again just tie it in to the fibers in behind and you never have to worry about that slipping down on you while you're wearing it. And just cut the string and then you're good to go and just do the other side. Make sure when you do the other side the angle that you have established here you want to establish it for the other side as well to be the same so that it looks consistent. So as you can see I'm finished. I now have my buttons in place. The brim is now permanently folded up providing a nice visor right into the center of the hat and then coming down the other side. Kind of reminds me of uh, 
uh, what was that Robin Hood it actually looks really amazing thank you so much for joining me today on behalf of yarnspirations.com as well as the crochet crowd thank you so much and until next time we'll see you sunny day